screaming back there. Oh, he and they happen to every single one of us. And so Anthony Hall has provided much of his life to share with us that understanding and clarity. We need to hear from people like Anthony Hall and I'm hoping that each and every one of you will take the time and try and absorb some of those ideas of earth into property, colonization, decolonization, and capitalism. 
the American Empire and the fourth world, the bowl with one spoon. These works are, these are the greatest works right now in terms of occupation in the world and what people are doing all over. And so at this moment, I'd like to take the time and invite Anthony Hall to share a few words with you as world occupiers and Vancouver occupiers. And as a Coast Salish woman, I'm making this invitation to each and every one of you. I have the authority to ensure that your occupation, as long as necessary, it will be. Anthony Hall. I tend to leave these books in the library. I left these books on the first day of uh, Occupy London, London, England. And in that context, we started to talk about Freedom University, talking from site to site, lectures, seminars, campaigns. I think it's important that we have like a digital screen so that we can assemble in our different spots in the world. Now we're occupying, but we're going deeper. We're not going anywhere. We inhabit these places. These are our public places. We inhabit, we live here. We need to get together. We're, we're, we start with an occupation. I want to congratulate each and every person who is here. Sometimes it seems maybe this is too little, too late. But we have to bear the responsibility. The future of the world is on our shoulders now. This is the most important initiative on the planet right now. And we have to be very humble about the responsibility we're carrying. Because we know those who are supposed to represent us in high places have failed. The corruption, the tyranny, the abuse is so obvious and overwhelming. And the closer you get to the financial system and the war system, which are intertwined and the same, the more the corruption is so obvious, stupendous. It was such a powerful moment when Dick Cheney was at the Vancouver Club, not too far from here, and I was there along with Darren Pearson, who took the penalty of a criminal charge. But the spirit, the spirit among the people at the Vancouver Club, we can't take it anymore. We can't take this display of our law enforcement, our police officials, protecting the highest criminals, the most obvious criminals on the planet. We can't stand seeing our media lying to us day in, day out, lying to us, lying to us in our face. Of course, we feel very badly about the person who OD'd here yesterday. And we have to be conscious of the responsibility we have to each other to do the best we can for each other because we're all sharing a degree of vulnerability but just by being here together so important of course things like this are going to happen we're in downtown Vancouver ODs happen all the time in downtown Vancouver this is a public place but shouldn't we be having our own institutions, our own drug and alcohol counselors doing it properly, our way, our own social services? Of course, we want to know that if there's a fire, that fire prevention instruments and people and personnel can get to the fire. We want to negotiate all of these things in a good way so that it's as safe and 
The public health situation is is. Mic check. Mic check. What is this mic check thing? It's nice. So you start by saying mic check. That's how you get people's attention. Uh, <coughs> But the point of the matter is we're not going anywhere. This is permanent. This is for the rest of our lives. And urban camping is here to stay. Urban camping. We need to get to know each other. We've been so pulled apart. We've been so divided. Oh, you're for gay marriage. You're against it. You're, you're this. You're that. We've been divided in so many ways. We need to get reacquainted. We need to come together in our communities. We know that the parliaments, Congress, legislatures, they are occupied by lobbyists who live there full time and contaminate the system and make sure that we have no say. Now, in our own supposed legislatures, in our own Congress, in our own Parliament. Those are bought and paid for. Those elected officials are largely just PR agents. And we see police and media, as we saw with Rupert Murdoch and News of the World, we see that police and media negotiate the real government. On behalf of who? Well, I think it goes a lot higher than Rupert Murdoch. I think he's doing somebody else's bidding. But in these communities, we are reinventing, regaining a sense of our community life, our shared life. Those books together, they're called The Bowl with One Spoon, The Shared Domain. It used to be that when Indigenous peoples, First Nations, were making treaties, and they decided we will share hunting territory. We can you both have access to this shared hunting territory. And in order to symbolize that shared hunting territory, we will, we will do a symbol of a bowl with one spoon. And Tecumseh, when he was standing against the western expansion of the United States into Canada, into Indian country, he adopted this bowl with one spoon. We've got to be collective. We've got to join together. That's how we are at this time in history. And that's what is so important about this movement. That's what's so important about the 9-11 Truth Movement, which I'm proud to embrace, which I write about in my books. It is so humiliating as a citizen to be lied, lied to on such a scale, on such important matters. We can't take it anymore. We have come together to regain our sense of community, to regain our sense of shared places, to fill in because the legislatures, the Congress, the Parliament, they don't represent us. We have to represent ourselves and we are the hope of the world to represent a possible future Indigenous peoples, especially Longhouse peoples. When they talk, there is often a turn of phrase. The decisions we are making today affect seven generations hence. When we make decisions, we have to think not only for ourselves, we have to think of our children, their children, their children, their children, seven generations hence. And that's what we've come together to do here. And to rise up and to take the authority for ourselves back to ourselves from those who have stolen it, who have, been so, who have made our institutions so illegitimate, those in the mainstream media who lie to us, who represent, who misrepresent what people are trying to do, but there's millions of us. And we grow from what we saw, the inspiration that we saw at Tahrir Square in Egypt. There's no way this movement can be contained. When we saw those people in Cairo, Egypt, coming together, moving into their central squares, and creating their own basis for their own self-determination, the regime they were facing, Hosni Mubarak, a very corrupt dictator. But who put him there? It wasn't any indigenous situation in Egypt that put him there. 
if we're going to deal with the Hosni Mubaraks of the world or the Stephen Harpers of the world or the Obamas of the world, the front men, the con men for the big PR agencies for the war machine, we're going to have to unite. We're going to have to take the authority back to ourselves. So in occupying this sacred ground, this Stalo territory, Squamish territory, Musqueam territory, West Coast Stalish, it's we, we acknowledge the permission that we've been given by our Aboriginal brothers and sisters, our First Nations brothers and sisters, and as we work out the land tenure, I think that's a very important part of Vancouver's particular occupation. If we do this properly in this place, if we negotiate the teepees that are going to be here, the sacred fire that is going to be here, the social service agencies that are going to be here, the gardens that are going to be here, the way we're going to, we're going to barter our, our food and all the things we need. We are, we are setting patterns. This is not just us. This is the new wave. This is survival. This is human beings trying to find we can possibly save something, have a decent life for seven generations hence. So I'll wrap up now. My graduate student, Joshua Blakeney, I was so proud to see him standing right here. And it was the first day, he was the third speaker, and there was like 4,000 people here. So I'm so proud that he was here. I was in London, England at the time. I will be going to uh, uh, Oakland, to the Bay Area, to the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm able to travel. At this stage of my life, I'm able to travel. And I, I like to bring my books. I'd like to have a, a, a seminar, a, a, a Freedom University, that the Occupy movement, we're creating institutions, permanent institutions, new ways of doing our education, new ways of making decisions for ourselves, new, new ways of doing our food, our trade, new ways of dealing with the war machine, the financial agencies that have degraded and debauched society and we're not going to take it anymore. We're not going to take that criminality from Dick Cheney, from Wall Street. And we want our law enforcers to become a little bit representative of the law rather than protecting the criminals. Thank you. Michael Stone also speaking about the Occupy movement around North America, so don't go away. Um, any questions, just shout them out. Open mic check to Dr. Hall, please. Can you say something about the um, Club Vancouver? The Vancouver Club, I mean. Uh, the Vancouver Club. Um, I wrote about uh, the Vancouver Club in Volume 2, Into Earth and Into Property. Earth Into Property has a lot of BC history and Patricia Kelly years ago I was in her home and her uh, she had a copy of the legislative report from 1876 that the BC legislature did on the Indian title question and that really got me going deeply into the title question in BC so Vancouver Club 1913 many of these decisions about not to recognize Aboriginal title who gets the logging contracts you know, how to corrupt the, the courts took place in that Vancouver club. And one of the things I read about was Jack Cram, a well-respected lawyer in Vancouver. He was representing another lawyer, O.J., and they discovered a pedophilia ring. And they discovered that it was going on at Whistler and the Vancouver club was mentioned. And he talked about it in a radio show. He was talking about it openly. And he went home after one of these radio shows and was picked up and put in the hospital 
and in jail. I, I, he was uh, a drugged up for many months. And so the amount of cover-up in this community, uh, Gustafson Lake Indian War in 1995, we watched uh, Sergeant Ryan, I worked closely with Splitting the Sky on this subject, and he tried to arrest George Bush in 2009. But at a meeting of the RCMP behind closed doors, they're getting ready for a media event, a media conference. And one of the sergeants says, can anybody help us with our disinformation and smear campaign? A police officer says, I, I interpret it to mean, can we purchase some journalists to spread you know, disinformation and lies on these people so we don't have to deal with the real constitutional issues they're raising. We'll just call them terrorists and criminals and savages. Of course, it's real easy to do that with Indian people, to, to demonize them in that way. So, and, and anybody. So, so we're tired of this, you know, this police officer was using the phrase disinformation and smear as if it's studied. And, and, and Vonnegut says smear campaigns are our specialty. So the uh, amount of uh, mind-twisting uh, control that takes place in this nexus between police and media who really run things I mean, the elected politicians, by the time the police and the media decide who is going to be depicted well, badly, who's going to be arrested, who's going to be demonized, who's going to be lionized, the politicians really have very little left. They're kind of uh, reading a script in a soap opera. They're kind of uh, largely bit players. Not Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney was a hands-on guy. That was no bit player. He was the operative guy for the for the Bush family crime racket. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Where do you see this movement going? Where Where do you want it to go? Well, this this movement, it's. Uh, I don't know, last February I found myself with Neil Tarrant talking it's on YouTube and saying, you know, what we're seeing in Tahrir Square, we all need to be going to our public squares everywhere in the world and getting together and reinventing our governance because we don't have our own governance anymore. It's been purchased. It's corrupted. Not to say that we can have some influence there and there could be some improvements there but it really comes down to this this is our government right now this is the source of legitimacy we have to take that's a lot of responsibility we talk about our rights but we also have to take we're carrying the weight of a lot of important things right now this moment won't come back again this way ever in the same way and we have to seize the moment so as I see it we, we the, the Occupy movement is permanent and it's not always going to be an Occupy movement we, we're inhabiting these places we're becoming home here it may be here maybe some other places but as I say this urban camping this is permanent we insist we're going to do this we have to get to know each other over periods of time to eat together, to prepare food together, to sing together in our public places, in our urban environments and, and this is what the prelude to making good decisions to understanding how we can make the transfer away from this, this destructive tyranny that is you know destroying the planet we live in a world where our economy our life support system kills life on the planet it's a terrible situation to be in where what we need to survive day to day we know is connected to industrial pollution military forces that are killing the planet killing the true economy so we, this is what we've got to work on, bringing our actual economy and our political economy into conformity with the natural world. And the First Nations, the indigenous peoples here, are going to be able to give us a lot of advice and a lot of help and a lot of insight. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Woo! Woo!